that they're going to accommodate. They're going to change the gospel to suit the needs of the people. They're going to change the gospel to suit the needs of the people. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness but in mind the power thereof. The Bible says the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. If there is no laws given, there's no strength of sin. If there is no laws given, there's no strength of sin. been waiting for one decade of radical grace preaching by Joseph Prince the Lord says son if you don't preach grace radically people's life will never be radically blessed radically transformed all you need to know about the gospel of grace in one definitive book destined to reign by Joseph Prince God sent Jesus. There was a time under the old covenant where God would judge because of they are under law. And God had to, you know, operate by the law because they asked for the law. The law. They wanted to be under law. And even then, Elijah would call fire down from heaven. There was a time under law. He was right to do that. But under grace, when Jesus came, John says, Lord, shall we call fire and burn these people who just rejected you? The Lord turned and says, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. And there are many, many people who want to be in the Elijah generation who has forgotten Jesus brought grace. And there are many, many people who want to be in the Elijah generation who has forgotten Jesus brought grace. And there are many, many people who want to be in the Elijah generation who has forgotten Jesus brought grace. and right at a given time is no longer 
valid. What was proper and right at a given time is no longer valid. Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. For most assuredly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not even one smallest letter or one tiny pen stroke shall in any way pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. I want to talk to you today about the power of I am. What follows these two simple words will determine what kind of life you live. I am blessed, I am strong, I am healthy, or I am slow, I am unattractive, I am a terrible mother. The I am's that are coming out of your mouth will bring either success or failure. Here's the principle. What follows the I am will always come looking for you. When you say, I am so clumsy, Clumsiness comes looking for you. I am so old, wrinkles come looking for you. I am so overweight, calories come looking for you. It's just like you're inviting them. Whatever you follow the I am with, you're handing it an invitation, opening the door, giving it permission to be in your life. Now, the good news is you get to choose what follows the I am. When you go through the day saying, I am blessed, Blessings come looking for you. I am talented. Talent comes looking for you. You may not feel up to par, but when you say, I am healthy, health starts heading your way. I am strong. Strength starts tracking you down. You're inviting that into your life. That's why you have to be careful what follows the I am. All right, so there you have false teacher, satanic deceiver, Joel Osteen, preaching a new age teaching under the disguise of Christian doctrine. Did you know in the book of Exodus, in chapter 3, verse 14, only the Lord, okay, is capable of this. He declares about himself, I am that I am. What they are doing is invoking a power of mysticism. You're not going to tell me, an ex-new ager, by the way, Check out my video series. I'll leave it linked up in the description section. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you love Jesus, you are living in the end time generation. All the prophetic signs are beginning to become manifested. What he is doing, brothers and sisters in Christ, is he is preaching positive affirmations. As you heard, all you need to say is, I am this, I am that, I am that. Okay, let's do a little uh, check. Okay, positive affirmations. Let's put it in Google. What comes up here? It, does, it, does Christianity come up? Affirmations, even this Wikipedia is rightfully um, identifying it as New Age. You're not going to find a Christian thing here, and if you do, it's not the real gospel. Self-help, self-development. We need not self-help, we need God help. God development. This is the empowerment of self, which is a false um, theology and a false spiritual system. You're going to get nothing but New Age, success consciousness, vital affirmations. Let me show you. On omharmonics.com, they talk about simple, profound meditation mantras. A mantra is saying the same thing over and over because in the New Age movement, which I come from, 
they believe, and I used to believe, that if you would say something over and over, you could basically invoke that reality. It's called the Law of Attraction, which was actually channeled by demons, people who allowed themselves to become channel for demonic spirits and to communicate this quote-unquote big secret, the secret, the Law of Attraction. As you can see here, listen to this, I am, this is the most powerful manifesting mantra. Think about it. Whenever you say, I am sick, how do you feel? Whenever you say, I am happy, how do you feel? In New Age Eastern mysticism meditation, you can use I am alone to honor and acknowledge your existence because you're calling yourself a god. In the New Age movement, they believe that reaching the highest state of consciousness is to become god consciousness, Brahma consciousness in yoga. And you can take it a step further and honor, acknowledge your divinity, not god, honor your divinity, and oneness with all that is. You can add, also add a positive affirmations while you meditate to help paint a mental picture on what you want out of life. For example, I am successful or what you want to be and so on. This is the exact same heresy that we just heard this false teacher preaching on Oprah, the guru of the new age. Do this this Sunday before you come to church. Declare to yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Feel it, not just believe it, feel it. Yeah, I know we are people of faith, but feel it. Feel that, 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 that righteousness, consciousness about you. And see, when you come to church, your hands don't be lifted automatically to worship God. Do this this Sunday before you come to church. Declare to yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Feel it. Not just believe it. Feel it. Do this this Sunday before you come to church. Declare to yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Feel it. Not just believe it. Feel it. You must receive that. Declare yourself to be there. You must receive that. Declare yourself to be there. Now therefore hear this, you who are given to pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. In their full measure shall they come on you, in the multitude of your sorceries and the great abundance of your enchantments. For you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, No one sees me, your wisdom and your knowledge, it has perverted you. And you have said in your heart, I am, and there is none else besides me. Therefore evil will come on you. You won't know when it dawns, and mischief will fall on you. You will not be able to put it away, and desolation will come on you suddenly, which you don't know. Stand now with your enchantments and with the multitude of your sorceries, in which you have labored from your youth. If so be, you shall be able to profit. If so be, you may prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from the things that shall come on you. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to warm at, nor a fire to sit before. Thus shall the things be to you in which you have labored. Those who have trafficked with you from your youth shall wander everyone to his quarter. There shall be none to save you. Say this with all respect, so that it don't upset you too bad. But I say it anyway. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. And that body inside is called the new man. And the new man doesn't look back. It has no past. It doesn't look ahead. It's got no future. It says, I am as he is. That's what it says. As he is, so are we in this world. Jesus said, go in my name, go in my stead. Don't say I have, say I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. That's why you never, ever, ever, ever have to say I'm sick. How can you be sick if you're the new creation? Say I'm healed. Don't say I'm a sinner. Mm. The new creature is no sinner. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. As you read on, so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and left to build the city. Left out the, and therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did confound the lands of all the earth. And from thence the Lord scattered them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now watch, if you look in the, if you look in the Amplified, it says they built the city. No, it was in their imagination. They said, let us go to. We're going to do this. And God said, my Lord, if two of you agree, why is that so powerful? Is it because of your faith? Well, yes, in one sense. But what it is, above all, is you a speaking spirit. 
You have the ability to create. And there's nothing man can't do. Words are like seeds. When you speak them out, if you continue to believe them and listen to them, they can come to a reality in your life. He also states, quote, like a magnet, we draw in what we are constantly thinking about, unquote. With respect to how one achieves material success or happiness in this earthly life, Osteen states, quote, believe, visualize, and speak out loud, unquote. Now, any biblical student who knows church history and early church belief might be asking, what is this that Osteen is teaching? Where does this teaching come from? This prosperity word of faith theology, name it and claim it, or think and speak positive and you will get what your heart desires belief, is actually an old New Age occult concept known as the law of attraction, or thought power, as I mentioned. And its origins are not Christian. This belief comes from the new thought movement of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as well as the mystics of the New Age Theosophical Society in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It was then picked up by much of the New Age movement as a whole. Where did Osteen, Oprah Winfrey, Deepak Chopra, and the movie The Secret get this view from? This view can be traced back to a New Age organization called the Theosophical Society. The Theosophical Society was a group of New Age mystics who firmly believed and taught that Lucifer was the true God or Messiah. The Theosophical Society was founded by Helena Blavatsky, who said, But in antiquity and reality, Lucifer or Luciferus is the name of the angelic entity, presiding over the light of truth as over the light of the day. Lucifer is divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost and Satan at one and the same time. And now it stands proven that Satan or the red fiery dragon, the Lord of Phosphorus and Lucifer or light bearer is in us. It is our mind." Unquote. Helena Blavatsky and Blavatsky's students believed that Satan was God, denied the truth of Jesus Christ, as well as the Gospel. The Theosophical Society grew into what we now call the New Age Movement of today, as their teachings about the New Age of Aquarius spread. This is where Joel Osteen's power of thought belief stems from. Notice how man-centered this occult New Age belief is. We must think of what we desire to receive. Where is Christ or submission to holiness in all of this? The emphasis of this teaching is selfish fulfillment of one's carnal desires and dreams. Joel Osteen is not preaching Christianity, he's preaching New Age occultism. Commenting on the link between Osteen's teachings and the occult notion of law of attraction and thought power, Dr. Ronald Bish notes the following in his work Jesus, the Way, the Truth, and the Life, quote, For Rhonda Burney, the genie is the law of attraction. For Joel Osteen, it's the word of faith. And so he's committed to the notion that faith is a force, that words are the container's force, and through the force of faith you can create your own reality." Unquote. This New Age Law of Attraction belief was also taught long ago by heretical false anti-Christian people such as Phineas P. Quimby and Mary Baker Eddy of the late 19th century, and it slowly found its way into Christian churches after the 19th century becoming what is now known today as the Word of Faith Movement, or Prosperity Gospel Message, present in Joel Osteen's sermons. Essek W. Kenyon, born 1867, died in 1948, incorporated this satanic man-centered belief into Christian churches, and it resulted in final acceptance since so many followed after him. Now much of the church believes this self-help, think positive thought power message to be the gospel when it is actually counterproductive to the truth of Christianity, which has always emphasized submission to the Lordship of Christ, denial of self, and denial of worldliness. This belief wants you to focus on worldliness and attain the material possessions and happiness your heart desires using thought power, except this time you combine God with thought power and you will get everything you want. This unbiblical, worldly, occult, new age, name it and claim it, law of attraction belief was then promoted by popular preacher Kenneth Hagin, which then sadly gave this type of doctrine more prominence and acceptance in the church setting. That's been a change, church! That's been a change! That's been a change, church! And it's all because of Jesus.